you're seeing a flesh and blood being in the middle of flames. Spooky ghosts and apparitions have long been part of our culture. Kids have been told traditional ghost lore for centuries. But is it all just fables, right? Ghosts don't actually exist, do they? Well, stick around and find out. In this video, we're going to tell you about the scariest ghost photos ever captured. Before we continue, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Let's begin! It's been an endless debate among the human race whether ghosts, the paranormal, and supernatural even exist. The problem arises whether the pictures have been doctored or some of them are indeed real. Picture editing has indeed come a long way as double exposure and in-lab as well as Photoshop trickery is easily available and readily used. Most of the photos we will talk about are indeed thought to be genuine, untouched portraits of the seemingly unexplainable. The Brown Lady The picture of the Brown Lady ghost is arguably one of the most famous and well-known ghost pictures ever taken. The ghost is thought to be of Dorothy Townshed, who had the title of Lady and was the wife of Charles Townsend. Charles was the second Viscount of Rayham. They resided in Rayham Hall in Norfolk, England during the early 1700s. It had been rumored that Dorothy had been the mistress of Lord Wharton before getting married to Charles. Charles had always suspected her of being unfaithful and of infidelity, although, according to legal records of the time, she died and was buried in 1726. It has always been suspected that the funeral was faked and an absolute sham. According to many, Charles had actually imprisoned his wife in a remote corner of the mansion until she sadly died many, many years later. The ghost of Dorothy had been said to haunt the giant oak staircase and other areas of Rayham Hill. In the early 1800s, King George IV was staying at Rayham. He witnessed a figure of a woman in a brown dress standing next to his bed. She was once seen again standing in the hall in 1835 by Colonel Loftus, who had been visiting the hill for his Christmas holidays. He was reported to have seen her again a week later and also described her figure to have been dressed in a brown satin dress with a pale glowing almost luminescent effect. He even said that he had seen that she had no eyes, with her sockets showing, and her eyes looked like they had been gouged out. Captain Frederick Marriott, along with his two friends, saw the same lady gliding across the hallway upstairs with a lantern in her hand. As she passed by Marriott, she grinned at them in a menacing and diabolical manner. A bullet was also fired at the apparition, but it simply passed through her body. The infamous picture of the ghost had been taken in 1936, during September, by one Captain Provand and Indra Shia. These two photographers were assigned to photograph in detail Raymond Hall for Country Life magazine. They developed the films that they had and the image of the brown lady ghost was seen. It was published in the December edition of the magazine. With so many different accounts of seeing her and the photos to go with the stories, it is hard not to believe that the ghost is real. Lord Cumbermere This spooky picture of the Cumbermere Abbey Library was taken in 1891 by Sybil Corbett. The figure of a man can be seen sitting on the chair to the left of the picture. His head, right arm, and collar are clearly visible, but the rest of him isn't so easy to make out. This is believed to be the ghost of Lord Combermere. Lord Combermere was a cavalry commander in the British Army in the early 1800s. He distinguished himself by being excellent in various military campaigns. Combermere Alley is in Cheshire, England, and was founded by Benedictine monks in 1133. Lord Combermere died in 1891, having had an accident and being struck and killed by a horse-drawn carriage. During the time of the photo being taken, Kumarmir's funeral was taking place a few miles away. It is thought that a servant might have come in the room and briefly sat on the chair, creating the transparent image. This is due to the fact that photographs took an hour of exposure to be recorded. This idea has been refuted vehemently by the members of the household, testifying that everyone was present at the funeral, leaving the house entirely empty. Ghost in the Burning Building it was November 19th of 1995 in the town of Shropshire, England. Wem Town Hall burned down to the ground with many spectators gathered around to watch the old building consumed by flames. This object was something out of Star Wars of today. It had been built in 1905 and was easily flammable. Photos of the fire were taken with a 200mm telephoto lens from across the street. One of the photos shows the figure of a little, partially transparent girl standing in the doorway. None of the firefighters or dozens of onlookers could recall seeing a girl being there though. You're seeing a flesh and blood being in the middle of flames. The photographer submitted the photo for the Association for the Scientific Study of Anomalous Phenomena, which in turn presented it for further analysis. Dr. Vernon, formerly of the Royal Photographic Society, was tasked to tell whether the photo was real or fake. He said that the negative is a straightforward piece of black and white work, which showed no signs of any manipulation. 
Hence, for the longest time, the photo had been believed to be real. Although some newspapers have claimed the photo of the girl comes from an old postcard, throwing some doubt into the veracity of the original image. Freddie Jackson This crazy photo was taken in 1919 and was first published by Sir Victor Goddard, a retired RAF officer, in 1975. The photo shows a group portrait of Goddard's squad, which was nobly served in World War I at the HMS Daedalus Training Center. There is an extra ghostly presence in the photo though. In the back of the airmen, positioned in the top row, fourth from the left side, a face can be clearly seen. This ghostly face has been said to be of Freddie Jackson, who was an air mechanic. He was accidentally killed by an airplane propeller only two days earlier. His funeral had taken place on the exact same day as the photo had been taken. Members of the squadron easily recognized their fellow man by his face. It has also been suggested that Jackson, who was unaware he had died, just casually showed up for the group photo as if everything was normal. The Black Seat Ghost Miss Mabel Chinnery was visiting the grave of her mother and other family members one day in 1959. She had brought along her old camera to take photographs of the gravesite. After taking a few shots of her mother's gravestone, she took a random photo of her husband, who was waiting alone in the car. At least, the Chinnerys had assumed that they were alone. When they eventually wanted to develop the film, the couple was more surprised to see a figure wearing glasses just chilling in the back seat of the car. Miss Chinnery did not take long to recognize that the figure was definitely of her late mother's. A photographic expert who was shown the image also determined that the image was neither doctored or a reflection, nor double exposure. Amityville Ghost This spooky photo was taken by Lorraine and Ed Warren. It is claimed that the little figure in the picture is of nine-year-old John Defoe. Defoe and his siblings and parents were brutally killed by his older brother Ronald at their house in Amityville. Ed and Lorraine Warren had been paranormal experts and they entered the house to find any sort of ghosts. They captured this image using a camera that could reliably take infrared photos during the night. This house has been somewhat of a legend and even had various horror movies made on its story. The Defoe murders were the inspiration for the Amityville horror series of books and films. The image itself is taken from the staircase going to the first floor. A little figure of a boy can be seen poking his head out of the room and on the left side. Conventry Specter This photo seems normal at first glance. But look carefully and you'll see that a tall and dark figure wearing what could be a monk's frock with hood in the top left of the image. This is the photo of the Conventry Freeman Society in 1985. It shows everyone at the event, including the scary and mysterious figure, bowing their heads as a sign of respect. Nobody at the event was wearing the sort of clothes that the ghost has in the picture, with numerous event goers testifying that they had not seen anyone remotely similar to the figure at the party. This further fueled the rumors that this was indeed a ghost captured on film. That's a wrap for a brief look at the scariest ghost photos ever captured. Do you believe in ghosts now? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for videos like this. See you in the next one.